Spirit Cafe guests do not represent the beliefs of Tamara Zoner or John Davis. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamara Zoner. And I'm John Davis. Welcome to Spirit Cafe. Come in, sit down, and grab a cup of love. A Spirituality Without the Guilt podcast. Good morning, my friends. It is morning for me here. I don't know what time it is for you there, but for me, it's morning, and that's all that I care about because, look, coffee. Thank you very much. Uh, I am here this morning, uh, and we're going to have a lovely day today uh, with a, a wonderful guest. Um, and I, I want to make sure I have the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the last name correctly, Margaret Agard. Um, and so Margaret Agard is here with us today, and she is a, an amazing individual uh, who has got a great story. Um, and, and she, and I, she and I come from the uh, 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 similar backgrounds in the fact that we come from, uh, well, we, we have large families. So I'm one of, I'm one of seven and it looks like she had eight. So it's going to be very interesting to, to have that conversation as well. But before we bring Margaret Agard into this picture, we need to bring in my co-host, my, my, my conspirator of compassion, my, my uh, friend who is, who is so bright and shiny that she's looking like pure white light today, my good friend, Tamra Zoner. Hello, Tamra Zoner. How are you today? Hello, John Davis. I'm wonderful. How are you? I am doing great. I'm 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 already got, uh, you know on the second cup of coffee, and I got lots of sleep last night, and things are great. Things are great. Excellent, excellent. It's nice to have you back in the world of coffee. <laughs> uh, amen, amen. <laughs> I during the whole fasting, I was like, oh my gosh, well, how, the one thing I needed was my coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a great guest today. I'm excited. Yeah, we have a great guest. And, and, and did this one come through Pod Podmatch? Mm -hmm. I, you know, yes, that sir. Podmatch has been a great thing for us because it's like totally, um, you know, we're meeting people that we ne wouldn't have necessarily run into, and so it's been a a wonderful experience, hasn't it? It has. It, yeah, it's very good to keep us rolling, and it's been a minute since we had a guest, so this is going to be fun. Yeah, this is going to be fun. So, uh, do you know much about our guest today? Nope, you know me. I read just the <laughs> basics, just their intro that they say, hey, I think I'd be a good match for you guys. And and then I keep it light because I love to learn about a human being in the moment. Right, there you go. Well, well our guest today is a, a single mother and sole financial support of eight children. Uh, she was a computer consultant and uh, she had a lot of things on her on her list and things were getting stressful and one day she gave it all over to somebody else to take care of, but we're going to let her tell that story. Uh, um, so uh, let me introduce you to Margaret Agard. Good, good morning, Margaret. How are you this morning? Hi, John. Happy to be with you and Tamara. Thanks for having me on. Oh, uh, you are. Oh, it's, it's wonderful to have you on. I'm very excited to talk to you about this story because this is a this is something so a lot of people can learn in, in regards to just letting things go <laughs> in general. Um, so um, why don't you tell us your story and, and uh, let's get into a conversation here. Okay. I, I actually, I should say I was a single mom with eight children. Uh, it's been a few years since that time. And I've since remarried. But at the time, I was in my mid 40s going to school full time trying to finish up my degree and the sole financial support of my family with eight children, some in college, most in high school. And it was, you know, I had been an executive in the high tech industry and was at the time an executive in the high tech industry. And so I certainly knew how to set priorities. I knew how to, you know, look at what made sense to do next and where to focus. But at that point, it all looked like I needed to focus there. <laughs> Like whatever I was planning to do that day, I had made way more to do than day to do it in. And it was all critical. It was all had to be done today. Reports for clients and um, reports for my school classes or, you know, papers do. And, you know, children take them to their athletic events and make sure they got to their jobs and answer any questions they had. And I thought, I just, I... I can't figure out how to stay on top of it all. And it seemed like a lot of times when I did something, it was the wrong thing. I would show up at class and there'd be a sign on the door. Oh, the professor's not going to be here today. You're, you can hold off on that paper till Friday. I think, wow, if I'd known that yesterday, <laughs> I could have worked on something else. 
So that's when I started um, going to God. And I had a relationship with God that I've been working on since my, well, since very young, but in particular, learning to hear his voice in my 20s. So for 20 years, I had really practiced on learning to hear that voice. And so it was easy for me at that point to just sit down, take my to-do list for the day and say, what really should I do today? Because you know the future. He probably would have known that professor wasn't going to be there. I would say, don't bother with that. Do this instead. And so that's when I first started doing it. And that's when the question really was, what should I do today based on here's my list of what's important? And, and it was at that point, I, before I started doing this, I was lucky to get four hours sleep a night and I was always stressed. And even then I woke up in the middle of the night thinking, what haven't I done? What haven't I done? And once I started doing this and really began to trust, because sometimes I got an answer, I thought, oh, that can't be right. But as I really began to trust, I was finished by eight o'clock at night. I got a good night's sleep. I never woke up being, ah. And when I was, even when I was driving places and I lived outside the DC area at the time. So you just never knew what traffic was going to be like. Maybe the president decided to go golfing and tied up the whole freeway. You just never knew. And so I, 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 I know the DC area very well. Yes, you're exactly yes. right. Worst traffic in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I was either there a half hour early or a half hour late. Yeah, but always. if I was running late, I thought, oh, you know what? Something's going to happen. The other person will be coming in and apologizing to me because they had some tie up. And that's exactly how it went. Like, I just mm. didn't have to worry anymore. But eventually, that question changed. And it changed because often as I was crossing off things on my list, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this maybe adding a few things that turned out later was critical. And I was glad I did it. I was often directed to help other people to take a meal, to mostly make phone calls, just call this person. And as I did those things, I realized he really was using me as his hands, which is really what he does. We're his hands. And then I started asking what do you want me to do today? And that is when my life really changed. So um, that's when I say I found my true purpose. Mm. And I think mm. we all have a purpose when we come here. It's hard to find it. Right. Sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me ask a, just a quick question. Um, so you said you were you you were, you were raised and believing in God. What was your what was your religious background? Um, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Okay. And from the beginning, we are taught, even our youngest children, we teach, you <clears throat> can learn to hear God's voice. Mm -hmm. You have both the right and the responsibility. Right. And I was taught from the time I was young, don't take our word for it. Go and ask right. God if what we are teaching you is correct. Right. Now, am I, am I correct that yeah. the Church of Latter-day Saints, that's the Mormons, right? Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yes. And that's, that's the Mormons called the Mormons. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people okay. say we're not Christian, which is like, you know what? Church of Jesus Christ. I don't know. I think <laughs> yeah, right. okay. I'm thinking if the Muslims were killing Christians, we'd be going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I, 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 yeah. Um, Tamara, is there anything you'd like to ask? I haven't formulated any questions yet. I'm still okay. soaking it all in, but I am curious. I, I do have questions. I always have questions. Um, <laughs> when you first started, you know, this process of like giving it up to God, I'll paraphrase, how, how did that go for you? <laughs> like, was it just easeful and graceful or was it like, one day you felt like you could do it. And the next day I was like, no, this is my list. I don't trust. Or was it how yeah, so all the time, all the time. And it still is very much, you know, I don't like to be micromanaged. That's why I ended up an executive. Like, just tell me what to do. I'll do it then stay away. Okay. And um, so to get up every day and ask that, eventually I had to start doing it at night. I still do it at night because if I do it in the morning, I'm already, it's like a set in stone. <laughs> like, don't right. change my list. And it's hard for me. But I had like one experience I had was trusting when he told me not to do something. 
for a while we were selling a product over the internet. And when we, and so we did most of our shipping on Monday because we didn't ship on Saturday or Sunday. So we had three days of orders by Monday morning, which is almost half the week. I can remember. And I just put it at the top of my list every day. It was going to get done, ship the orders. Right. And once the, the thought came, don't do that today. I thought, what? you know what? You're up there in heaven. Maybe you don't really know how business runs here on earth. <laughs> so, and we have a promise on our website. We ship next business day. And you know what? I'm, ship I'm doing those orders. So I did. Went down with the orders, went to the post office, and it was President's Day. So the post office wasn't open. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, maybe I should have listened. Uh, and yeah, once I was praying for a friend, it was right, it was shortly after the divorce. And I thought, I, I just need a friend, someone I can share anything with, someone I can be close to. And one day the thought came, you know, I kind of knew this woman in my neighborhood, take her a dinner. And I took her the dinner. And somehow over time, we just spent more and more time together. We became like third grade best friends except we could drive and had money. So it was great. And I thought, you know, he answered that question, that request by asking me to do some service. And the result of the service was getting that blessing I'd asked for, which was a friend. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So after a while I was like, yeah, just do it. Although I still argue with it. I do still, you would think I've been doing, now I'm at 72. I've been doing it for like almost 30 years. So like, yeah, right. um, I wish I could say it's easy. <laughs> right. Right. Camera is I, not. <laughs> I, I want to go back just to make something very clear uh, all for our, our listeners. Um, uh, on on Spear Cafe, we don't say anything that could, go, could be construed as against another religion in any shape or form. Um, and so oh, that thing about uh, Muslims probably should take that out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that we all know because, because, um, uh, I have traveled through many Muslim countries and met, met many beautiful, wonderful people and have found beautiful things in the, in Islam and the Quran, just as I, just as I found in the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, the Baka Namrut and every other text I've ever found. I found love and kindness in all of them. And, uh, I just want to make sure that we have, we say that here because this is a safe space for all places. And as we all believe that in our father's house, there are many mansions and those many mansions right. are in many ways to the one, oneness of God. So I just wanted to make sure he said that on, on here, because I, it, I think a lot of times we can, in, in giving our beliefs, we will sometimes say things in such a way that they can be construed in many different directions. And I just want to make sure we're very clear. That's all I'm saying. Right. Um, You're right, John. I do apologize for that. Oh, oh no. Because I have no, the same beliefs. So yeah, there's yeah. there's no reason to apologize. It's just a matter of I just want to make things clear. Um so um so when you gave it over to God, do you do you feel you know I have a very different perspective than you in, in that um my beliefs are, are are not are not uh Christian oriented in that I'm I'm more an all-inclusive oneness oriented sort of way. And when I heard you say um, on your, you had the list that you said you, you know, you couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, to me, that's a red flag statement because when I hear the word how, that means you're you're declaring that you don't know how you do don't that it's not happening in the moment. And um, in the in the Bible, it says, uh, "Whatever you ask in God's name is granted," if you have faith. And Moses climbed the mountain. And talk to the burning bush and ask the bush's name and the bush said i am so if you're if you're in the belief of i don't know how you're actually saying i'm not so uh, that's my belief now i'm not asking you to, or anybody else to take my belief that's, and tamra might have a different belief so we have you know we all have different perspective so do you do you do you think that when you gave it over to god you kind of came into a place of uh co-creating with God, as opposed to stepping out of the creation picture? I would say my connection to God does bring me into that. And what I want to say for sure, though, is this isn't me talking to me. This isn't some deep inner me talking to me. Because I, I have connected to what I think of as my deepest, truest self, and I still am learning. 
through that. And so mm -hmm. I have, um, I often get answers that I personally, it never occurred to me to think that way. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, yeah. I've had the same. I've had the exact same. And I actually asked once, so I stayed a Christian because I actually asked that, that kind of all knowing that spirit, that sense of here, I know I ha have truth. Mm -hmm. And I said, should I stay a Christian? Here's one thing I've never, ever questioned. I mean, when I was a little kid, I never believed in Santa Claus, but I always <laughs> believed in Christ. I mean, I was like, Santa Claus, that's a pile of, but Christ, yes. And so I thought in my fifties, what have I never questioned? I thought, well, I've never questioned that. So I'll ask that. Should I believe in Christ? And the answer I got was, um, so it was, this would be like an engineer asking the question. I knew all the background once the question was asked. He often it uses the Socratic method with me. It was, have you ever done anything you can never make up for? Mm. And immediately I knew the whole answer to that. Like, even if I did nothing but good from this time on, even if I was reincarnated 10,000 times, there was a part of the universe that would be left um, unjust because someone had been hurt in a way I could never make up for. Right. All the sorries in the world would never make up for it. But the Christian belief is that Christ creates both just and mercy. That's what I had the thought of. Because of Christ, the world is both just and merciful. And when I think of justice, I think of victims' rights. Mm. I think he is the great healer. And he can heal us of the terrible things people have done to us mm. and bring us back to our true self, the sense of wholeness. He uses that word. The Bible uses that word, wholeness, right? Mm -hmm. And wholeness refers to spiritual and emotional healing, not just physical healing. And that's often, you know, like even when he healed the blind person or the leper, thy faith has made thee whole isn't talking about being healed of leprosy mm. or being able to walk again. It's everything you suffered. So I think of it this way, through Christ, I am healed of the guilt and shame I feel for the things I did for pe to people because I right. know he can take care of it. And the grief and pain I feel from the things people have done for me, mm. to me. Right. So I thought, okay, I'm staying a Christian. Right. Okay. <laughs> so that was my answer. That okay. was my answer. Yeah. And, and, and I respect your beliefs. And I think that we all have, we all come to God from a different perspective. Um, and uh, Tamara, is there anything you'd like to throw in here? No, I'm just enjoying listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're looking glowing and beautiful over there, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should just ask God to fix this camera setting yeah. crap for me. <laughs> I go, Angel. I, I do that often. I'm like, I can't fix this. What am I supposed to do? Right, Once I had right. like, oh, you know, we had DVD players in our computers, the CD. It was like I got stuck out. I couldn't get it to go back in. And I'm kind of, I actually did pray and it was like uh just kind of push here and it was some weird little thing because it was actually like in kind of at an angle and bam it just went in camera right. you ask him he'll tell you <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm curious to know how how do you hear your answers or how do you receive your answers it is a thought it is a thought you know i often call it a voice but it's kind of like saying yeah my mom's voice in my head okay we're not hearing an external voice right we're hearing those words and so it is a thought and I had to learn to discern the difference between that thought that is connected to the divine and all the other thoughts going on in my head, including the thoughts that saying, what is she talking about? And thoughts in my head. So right. that there's a thought there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I did when I was learning this, as I said, in my early twenties, I don't know how to hear your voice. Will you help me learn? And that next week I had experiences where I would have a thought to do something and the thought would, I would kind of blow it off and the thought would come back it was insistent and quiet. And uh, so I, since I just had said that prayer, I started paying more attention. Mm -hmm. And at least twice during that week, when I did it, people said to me, I had been praying for this. The thing you just did was what I had been praying for. And so I began to recognize it's a good thought. It's a thought that's kind of out of the blue to me, like invite some, someone to dinner on a Monday. Who does that? Plus, we just had them the following Friday, the previous Friday. And just 
it's um, will come back if I blow it off a few times until I say, oh, wait, wait, is this you, God? <laughs> and so because I had spent 20 some years doing that, by the time I was in my mid forties, I actually could recognize that thought. And also I would say it's clear and it's concise. So I have an example of that. I, we were going up to Alaska and I was kind of ready. I thought I was ready, but should it, well, I mean, I had my bear spray, you know, for the grizzlies and stuff. I was like, okay, I'm ready. I have my sad light for dealing with the darkness. And I said, what else should I do? And immediately the thought came, take a brisk walk every day. Now I know the word brisk. I probably have never in my entire life used the word brisk in a sentence <laughs> or when I'm talking to someone. And it's very clear. Like you don't have to take up running marathons. Um, you don't have to, but please don't get out there and just stroll along smelling the roses. I want your heart beat up a little, a brisk walk every day, which turned out we needed to do because we eventually lived north of the Arctic Circle in a native village where just to get a car up there cost $10,000 to have it barged up. Mm. Plus, you know, the village was only so big, only had so many roads, you know? So we were walking every day, miles. Wow, wow. Way. Yeah, I, I find that fascinating. You, you've said a couple of things that totally ring true to me because um, when I first had my Kundalini rising experience, which was my foray into my first out of body experience, which was fascinating. Um, as that was happening, I was I was at a point where I was um, <laughs> and it was funny. I was trying to warm my body up and I wasn't even thinking about having that experience. It just naturally happened. I found myself at a point where I was, I couldn't get my face to warm up. And suddenly I heard a thought and I say it that way very specifically. I heard a thought. It was like yes. somebody else's thought in my head. And I, what it said was relax into it. And when I relaxed into mm -hmm. it, I had, I had the Kundalini rising experience, which if you don't know what that is, it's suddenly boom, burst of white light, pure energy, feeling one with everything. Um, and the next day I had my first out of body experience and so hear, hearing the thought voice is what I call it, uh, right. is very much a, a very clear thing. Um, the other thing you said, oh, I'm trying to remember what it was. I, I, I got sidetracked talking about that. <laughs> um, so you said thought voice and you said something else that was. Was it clear and concise, that part? No? Oh, uh, um, although clear and concise is, 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 is uh, absolutely imperative in regards to it the other thing you said was that you're like oh, oh it goes back to um belief we talked about belief you said um you know i believe this happens through christ and i and i totally get that you know um and and do you how do you, what do you feel about belief itself and faith itself because you know i know that no nowhere in the bible does it say faith in christ it says in faith and greater works than I have done, you will do if you have faith. Uh, it is your faith that heals you. Um, it, at no point is, is it attributed in the Bible anywhere to, um, you know, if you have faith in me. It doesn't, it doesn't say that anywhere. So I, I was just curious what your belief about faith in general is, is because one of the things you did say was you said, I have faith in Christ. And so I just wanted to know whether, whether you feel in your belief system that the intermediary is, is needed. So oh, like, I see what you're asking. Yeah. Well, I do believe, um, yes, I, actually, I do believe that, that um, it is only because of his grace. And he does say, ask for things of the father in my name. So basically he's kind of said right from the beginning, ask in my name. Well, and so, but I was going to go on. So let's talk about faith. I want to talk about faith for a minute. Okay. For me, there's a difference between um, faith in that what I'm hearing and the direction I'm receiving and what's the word people use? Manifesting. Okay. Mm. Like so people want to say, oh, it's kind of like manifesting. Well, not really, because I'm often told to do things that hasn't occurred to me to do. But mm. what I have faith in is that through that power of Christ and whatever else is going on, that through mm, the universe, what I've been told to do, I will be able to do because of where it came from. And you mm -hmm. know what? It's hardly ever, you know what I want you to do? Go get yourself a BMW in a house on the hill. 
you know, it's just never that. It's kind of like, what I want you to do is um, build that friend who didn't have fire insurance, a new house. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, you know, I don't really know how to do that. But somehow we got her a house built. It was tiny, like 600 square feet, but it got done. So those are the kinds of um, directions I'm given <laughs> that I have right. to have faith in. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I've been right. told to do it. We can make it work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I completely respect that. I, I, you know, I, there's, I don't think there's any, anybody can absolutely know the, the one true way. I think yeah. God, God is too big to be encompassed by one school of thought. <laughs> you know, and and I think that I think there are so many beautiful different ways to get there. So I just I just like hearing other people's points of view. Yeah, yeah it's so interesting because John and I talk a lot about this more direct experience with source. And and I've even said to my mom, you know, who I don't need a middleman, mom. Sorry. <laughs> and so it's but it's lovely to hear because we are embracing everybody's faith, as long as it's in love, right? Based in love, then every faith, every expression of spirituality, including religion is welcome. And that's part of what we're doing here is discussing it and, and opening people's minds to different possibilities of really the same result. Right. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because um, I hear people quote the Bible. Um, they always leave out the first part, love God, and just go right to the second, love others as you love yourself. But that wasn't what Christ said at the end of his life. He gave a higher law. He said, love other people like I do. And in the Bible, Paul tells us when you have, when you are dwelling in the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit is present, This is what is also present, patience, kindness, gentleness, honesty. He he lists it all. And you know what? It matches up with 1 Corinthians where he says the greatest, you know, faith, hope, and charity is charity. And then he says, this is what it's like when you have charity, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, right? And so the two match up. So the only way we can love as other people love is when we're dwelling in the Holy Spirit. And so my focus of my life is how do I always have that? How do I always feel that um, connection to the divine, which is the only way I can love other people. Right. That makes, that makes sense. It makes sense. It's interesting because it seems like a lot of your translations are coming straight out of the King James version. I'm and, all into King James. <laughs> okay. So if you go back to the Septuagint, which is the earliest known translation yes. of the New Testament, it does not say a lot of the things that you're saying. Um, it, it, it does not say in my name, it says in God's name. Um, and it, so there's a, there's, there's a lot of translations, but I think that you can get to the source from all the translations. I just wanted right. to make sure we, 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 we let everyone know that that's, that the, there's a lot of translations. Um, yeah. Not everybody to know you can get to the source without any of the translations. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Also, a- also uh, historically, uh, Paul, uh, was, um, what's that? What's the word? Philistine. I believe he was a Philistine. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah but- you're thinking of it. He's, um, there's the, what's the word? It does start with a P. So there were the, oh my gosh, you can't remember and I can't remember. I'm going to look it up here. Hold on. <laughs> it was there. He kept talking about the, you know, kind of the three big cults of Judaism at the time. And one was the one that starts with a P, which you're thinking of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, but his, his whole teachings were based upon uh, the Old Testament and the teachings of, of Judaism. And um it's very interesting because when you look at at Paul in general, um, pa- Paul's fa- a fascinating guy because when you dive out of what's what's acknowledged as the modern Bible, and you go into the the Gnostic text, the Dead Sea text, the Coptic text, and you dive into all those things, you find out that um, the Book of James, brother of Jeshua, uh, Jesus. Um, basically calls Paul the great liar. Um, and the, in one of, the, one of the, the texts of John in the Coptic text talks about Paul um, declaring himself an apostle when he wasn't. Um, 
And there's a bunch of, so it, it really comes down to what your interpretation is in the end. So that's why I, that's why I try to broaden out to as much as I possibly can read and find, because I find what is loving, because I, I truly believe what John said, that God is love. And because that's found in all of it. Um, and so when I read any of the translations or any of the texts, if I find something fear-based or, or disempowering, then I don't believe it can be an accurate translation if God is love. So what's your take on that statement? Because I'm sure that'll, that'll be an interesting conversation there. <laughs> um, I, so my sense of, well, I mean, have my own attitude towards Paul because more than once he said, well, I, this isn't from God, this is my own opinion, but I'm so close to God, I think it's okay. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Especially when it comes to women, Paul, you know, rethink that one. So um, I, I, I agree with you. I look for what's love. And Paul actually does say that. He says all the commandments are based in love. The 10 mm -hmm. commandments are based in love. It's not a loving thing to lie about your neighbor. You know, mm -hmm. it's not a loving thing to steal. So um, the whole thing is based in love. And some of them are nots and some of them are the shoulds. So I'm absolutely about that. You know, I've been told since I was little, honestly, if the whole, if you're there, if you're connected to God, to the Holy Spirit, then then you're able to forgive and be loving and kind. Yeah. And the word is Pharisee, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and Sadducees. It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And I don't know, it's kind of funny. So the Sadducees, I had a, a teacher in religion who said, you know, the Sadducees didn't believe in life after death. That's why they were sad, you see. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's yeah funny. And I've never well, let's talk about the, the texts and the books i want to hear about yours margaret oh my talk book about, oh yeah. yeah so i actually did um write a book about the experiences i had as i turned my life over to god by turning my to-do list over to god and uh, it's called In His Footsteps. I gave my life to God by giving him my to-do list. And then I have a second book where we served missions, where we got to spend 24-7 with my second husband, um, turning our every day over to God. And it, they're found on inhisfootsteps.com. And I actually have an audio book if you'd rather listen to things. So I actually have an audio version. The links to all the books are there. The links to my hmm, social media are there. I have a monthly newsletter and I actually have to force myself so no one will ever get spammed if you sign up for mine because I'm too lazy <laughs> to spam people welcome to my world <laughs> yes <laughs> wonderful and so you said the website was in his footsteps.com is that correct yes. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. So that's how people can find you. And where's your favorite place to show up online? Where, like, where do you post? Oh, Facebook. Often? I mean, I keep trying to do Instagram. And so it's my second favorite, but, okay. and I do Twitter like once a week. I know you're supposed to do it five times a day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm like you. <laughs> I do Twitter when I remember maybe once or twice. Yeah. A month. <laughs> Not me. I, I'm pulling it back from all of that stuff. Yeah, good for you, John. I do like to share. I do like to share. And what I like to share when, like when I share your podcast or YouTube link is I really like to share what your stuff is about. For me to get on there again and say, guess what I'm talking about, giving your to do list to God again is not very exciting. But to say, guess what? I was, you know, talking with John and Tamara at Spirit Cafe who are focused on, you know, got to have a cup of love kind of day. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah. I think is kind of fun. No, well, well, I will put all the links and everything in the description yeah. below. So there'll be a, anybody listening to this podcast, you'll be able to find it in the description on any of your podcast platforms and on YouTube. Uh, you'll have all the directions to, to find Margaret and, and, and get different books and, and go out there and buy them and, and you know, make sure you, you, you read from your perspective and, and, yeah. and find what's true for you because, you know, it, it's a beautiful way to find your way, way back to God and source and yada, yada, whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, so I, it's been a beautiful uh, interview and um, we are coming to the end of time. So uh, thank you, Margaret, for being here today. Thanks for having me. Tamara, oh, it's, been, it's, it's been lovely. It's been lovely. Tamara, you want to take us out of this thing? I 
sure do. So yes, thank you. Thank you to Margaret. Thank you, John. Thank you to our listeners and viewers. We so appreciate you. We, we would do this without you, but we like it better with you here. And <laughs> we'd love to hear your comments and read your comments and thoughts on today's topic. So leave those comments and come back again next week when we have another interesting conversation about spirituality. Uh, in its many, many forms. And the most important one, as you know, to us is love. We love you and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Thank you for joining us at Spirit Cafe, a place where you can safely explore your spirituality without the guilt or dogma of religion. Leave all comments and suggestions on the Spirit Cafe podcast Facebook page.